Lux presents Hollywood. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Maureen O'Hara, Richard Conti, and Veronica Lake in Slattery's Hurricane. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeling. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. One of the most dangerous and adventurous assignments in the United States Navy is the hurricane service, in which flyers chart the course of threatening hurricanes to warn those in the path of the oncoming peril. Our play tonight, Slattery's Hurricane, is the story of one flyer's battle against the elemental storm in the sky and the emotional storm within himself. And as the stars of this exciting 20th Century Fox drama, we bring you three accomplished players. One of your loveliest favorites, Miss Maureen O'Hara, the dynamic Richard Conti, and in her original role, provocative Veronica Lake. Besides being a favorite topic of conversation, the weather also has its effect on delicate skin. Smart women protect their complexions with Lux Toilet Soap because they know that in any weather, Lux Soap is a safe complexion care. Now, here's Act One of Slattery's Hurricane, starring Richard Conti as Slattery, Maureen O'Hara as Aggie, and Veronica Lake as Dolores. <laughs> It isn't easy to describe a hurricane. It's one of nature's nightmares, a windstorm of great violence, often several hundred miles in diameter, with a dead calm at the center called the eye. Every year from July to December, the Caribbean crawls with these evil offspring of the elements. Usually, the hurricanes waste themselves over the ocean. But several times in a generation, the protecting hand of God is withheld and the hurricane heads toward shore and the homes of men. This is the story of such a hurricane and of a man named Will Slattery. On the coast of Florida is a United States Naval Station known as Hurricane Weather Central. Commander Kramer, sir? Yes. All planes have been evacuated to Cherry Point, sir, as you ordered. All except Lieutenant Hobson's plane, sir. See that the crew stands by. Hobson will be here in a few minutes. I beg your pardon, sir, but the radio tower has just reported contact with an unidentified plane using Lieutenant Hobson's call. What? Huh? Pilot claims he's reporting for hurricane reconnaissance to replace Lieutenant Hobson. He says Hobson is too ill to fly, sir, and requests instructions. Well, tell that fool, whoever he is, that we're in an emergency condition. Tell him to get off the circuit at once. I've already done that, sir. What does he mean, Hobson's too sick? I called his home not 20 minutes ago. I spoke with him. What's this all about, Mr. Hardy? I don't know, sir. I suggest you talk to the pilot yourself, sir. He still has contact with us. Tell the tower I'll be right there. There he is, sir. He's coming through now. Sambo 3 from Roughneck. Sambo 3 from Roughneck. Do I get instructions or don't I? Stand by. Commander Kramer will talk to you. Here you are, sir. Navy tower to aircraft. This is an order. Get off circuit and report at nearest airport. There's a hurricane heading for the whole coast with 120 knot winds, bearing approximately 110 with a center 200 miles offshore. Out. Thanks for the bearing. That's just what I wanted to know. This is Grumman Mallet 2975. 60 miles southeast Miami, 600 feet. Changing course for 110. Sorry, I can't obey orders. You can use me just to last if nothing else over. Grumman Mallard from Navy Tower. Get back on the ground immediately. Find another way to commit suicide. Lieutenant Hobson is here, sir. What's this all about, Hobson? I don't know, sir. Some fool trying to kill himself says he's a replacement for you. What do you know about it? May I take the microphone, sir? Yes, go ahead. Slattery, this is Hobson. I know what you're trying to do. You can't get away with it. Slattery. Your friend who had the medal? Yes, sir. You can't let him do it. Lieutenant Hobson is familiar with the plane I'm flying. It's capable of mission. Over. This is Kramer. I'm warning you for the last time. You're obstructing a Navy weather flight and you're jeopardizing the lives of everyone in this area. You've got a reserve commission, Slattery, and I'll have you court-martialed. I'll put you away for 20 years. Yes, sir. I'll contact you later, sir. Over. Are you coming in, Slattery? Answer me. Are you coming in? If 
I get on the ground again, I'll take it. Plane is capable of mission. <laughs> Who are you kidding, Slattery? You got a nice airplane, but it wasn't built for this kind of stuff. No, and neither were you, but you're in it. And what are you going to do about it? What can you do about it? Yeah, this is how it's all going to end, Slattery. But how did it begin? Don't you remember? Oh, you were really lucky that day. 150 million people in the country, and you had a bump in there. I just can't believe it. What are you doing in Miami? I live here, Harvey. Got a nice, soft job. Why don't you keep in touch with a guy? <laughs> Why would I want to keep in touch with you? Come on over to my car. I want you to meet somebody. Huh? Hey, Dolores. Remember the guy I was telling you about? Well, here he is, honey. Harvey Hobson, Dolores Greaves. Hello, Mr. Hobson. I know all about you. How do you do? I'm still too surprised to know what to say. It's sure good to see you, Harvey. Look, this is where Dolores lives, and we were just going in. She's going to cook dinner. So how about joining us? I wish you would. If Will can stand it, I'm sure you can, too. Well, I'd sure like to, Miss Greaves, but I'm just going out to the naval station. I'm on duty in half an hour. You got a car? Yeah, just down the street. Look, Connie, I haven't talked to this guy in a long time. I'm just going to walk him to his car. I'll be right back. I'm glad to have met you, Miss Greaves. Give him a rain check for dinner, Will. Are you kidding about duty? You're not still in the Navy. Sure I am. Holy smoke. Jets? Uh-uh, privateers, weather squadron. Privateers? Those flying freight cars? Mm. <laughs> what are you going to do? Trying to catch up on your reading? No, I managed to keep interested. I got a little flight to make right now. As a matter of fact, do you want to come along if I can fix it? Why not? Uh, what about your girlfriend? Oh, I'll see you a little later. What kind of a flight, Hob? Patrol? Oh, something like that. Reports of a big wind about 300 miles out at sea. Maybe a hurricane. It's part of our job to find out. Okay, weatherman. Wait here till I square things with the Lord. <laughs> Well, this is it, Slattery. Some fun, huh? Quite a flight, Harvey. That's as close to a hurricane as I ever want to get. Close? You were right in it, son. Now maybe you see why we need big planes. A small plane in a wind like that would be torn apart. I still don't know what you guys are trying to prove. You can't stop a hurricane by flying through it. No, but if our dope shows that it's heading for land, then we can warn all cities within 150 miles of the track to board up. When you cut off the lives of that many people, even for a day, it costs millions and millions of dollars. What do you do now? Write up a report? Ah, that's all been taken care of, radio. Oh, yeah, Sambo 3 from Roughneck. Well, what goes now, Roughneck? Well, let's get cleaned up. First, I'd better phone my wife. Yeah, I guess I'd better give Dolores a ring, too. This way, deadhead. Why couldn't you just said goodbye and walked away from that guy? Oh, no, you had to see what kind of a dame Harvey had married. You had to be a big shot. So you picked up Dolores and made a reservation at a nightclub. Harvey and Harvey's wife met us there. Champagne, huh? Oh, take it easy, Will. What's the occasion? Who cares? Haven't you two got an anniversary or something? Say, Dolores, I thought you and Harvey were going to dance. That's right, Lieutenant. Not backing out, are you? Well, we'll just have to let these two get acquainted by themselves and uh, save some champagne for us. Well, Mrs. Hobson, small world, isn't it? Seems to be, doesn't it? I've got to congratulate you. You didn't bat an eye when you just saw me. <laughs> You're quite an actor yourself. I lose you in San Diego, find you here in Miami, married to a guy I met in China. Very happily married, too. Yeah, so I see. What happened to you, Aggie? You might have telephoned me to say goodbye, or at least have left a note in the milk bottle. You have the nerve to sit there and ask me what happened to me? Yes, you ran out on me. I chased all over town trying to find you. And then I had to ship out. I never did find out what happened to you. Now, isn't that a pity? I ran out on you. Maybe you've forgotten all the night you stood me up at the time you went out to get cigarettes and didn't show up till two weeks later. Well, that was different. You just disappeared off the face of the earth. You're darn tootin' that was different. The wedding bells had started to ring the last time, Will. Or had that slipped your mind, too? Aggie, I told you I'd be gone for three or four days. I had some things to attend to. You told me that so many times. I... Oh, let's just forget it, shall we? It was long ago and far away. And now you've found somebody else, and so have I. Look, you can't brush me off like that. You weren't just another girl. You meant everything to me. I've never gotten you out of my system, and I never will. Stop it. Well, go ahead and laugh if you want. But that's how things happen to be. I'm not laughing, but you've got to listen. I'm married now. It's all over. 
It wasn't easy for me either, you know. It hurt for a long time, Will. But I got over it. I had to. So you married Harvey. I could figure you married to a lot of guys, Aggie, but somehow not to him. What's wrong with him? Nothing. He's a swell guy. He just doesn't seem like your type. Did it ever occur to you that I might have changed? I'm off that roller coaster, Mr. Slattery. I'm off it for good. Take it easy. How'd you two make out? You mean you weren't watching us? Hobby's a wonderful dancer. Oh, this girl would make anybody look good. She sure would. Say, Hobby, huh? I just got a terrific idea. You on duty tomorrow? No, why? Then how about me picking you and Aggie up in the morning? Take you for a ride in the boss's plane. I'll show you the best private ship in the world today. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Aggie. Will's still a pilot, all right, only he works for some millionaire. So does Dolores. As a matter of fact, that's how we happen to meet. The boss's secretary and the boss's pilot. Wait till you see that plane, Mrs. Hobson. Sounds good, huh, Aggie? Hey, what time will you pick us up, Will? Sorry, but you'd better count me out. I have to go to the uh, hairdressers in the morning. Oh, come on, honey. You can go there any time. If you'll forgive my saying so, Mrs. Hobson, I can't imagine your hair looking any more beautiful than it is right now. Well, Dolores, how about making me look good on that dance floor? I'm so glad you called me tonight, Will. They're both so nice, aren't they? Yeah. Nice couple. Will, have have you ever met her before? Hmm? Mrs. Hobson. Oh, oh no, not until tonight. She looks like quite a girl, doesn't she? Funny. I had a feeling you two knew each other. How long did you know him, Harvey? In the service, I mean. Oh, three years, I guess. <laughs> I thought I told you all about Slattery. He wasn't quite a thing down in the Marianas. He broke flight formation one day, went off by himself, and sunk a Jap cruiser. Oh, big hero, huh? Yeah, the only trouble was his wing cameras were shot out, and he couldn't show any proof. A few of us saw what happened, but it didn't do any good. So all he got for sinking his ship was ten days for disobeying orders and breaking flight formation. Now, look, honey, can't you put off that appointment tomorrow? I like the guy. It'll be fun flying with him again. Hobby, I... Oh, all right, darling. Whatever you say. I wasn't surprised when Aggie came along the next morning. I knew she'd be there. She hadn't changed that much. I drove them out to the beach, the boss's estate. Dolores was waiting for us. She wanted to show them. Take a good look, Aggie. Oh, we may never be so close to paradise again. Boy, oh boy, what a layup. <laughs> it's really something, isn't it? Mm. But don't let the surroundings impress you too much. You see, Will and I only work here. Of course, Will lives here, too. The boss does a lot of flying. He likes me around. Those are my headquarters over there, that cottage. This must be very hard for you to take, Mr. Slattery. I told you I was riding a gravy train. Let's get down to the hangar. Aren't you coming, Dolores? I haven't made the gravy train. I'm still just a secretary. Maybe I'll see you when you get there. Well, uh, thanks for the tour. What's your boss do, Will? Not a great deal. He's got sort of a bad heart. But he still runs the business from here. You ever eat a candy bar called Oh Baby? Sure. He's the guy who makes them. R.J. Milne. Just think, Harvey. The nation's sweet tooth built all this. Just like our dream house. You thinking of building? Oh, we've got lots of plans. I want to settle down somewhere, have a... Nice, steady life. Three or four babies. On Navy pay? Well, we can drink, can't we? Yeah, yeah, oh, sure. Dolores, come here a moment, if you please. Yes, Mr. Milne. Where's Mr. Slattery going in the plane? Yes, what do you know about this? Why did he take the plane? I'm sure he won't be gone very long. He took some friends along, the lieutenant and Mrs. Hobson. The lieutenant? The Navy, Mr. Gregory. They were in the war together. Well, he had no right to do this. Will had to check the plane anyway, and Forget he thought... Forget it, Dolores. Is this your breakfast, Mr. Gregory? I'll take care of this. Uh, don't go away, Miss Greaves. I'll have some letters to dictate in a few minutes. Yes, sir. Sweet job that plane is. 60 degree bank on one engine. <laughs> I still can't get over it, Will. Neither can I. I dropped 10 years of my life up in that wild blue yonder. Well, what's your rush, Aggie? Slow down. 
I want to go home and get some rest. I've got a date, too, remember? Oh, yes, the hairdresser. Look, Harvey, why don't you take my car? I can pick it up later and we can... Good morning, Mrs. Slattery. The Hobsons have a nice flight? Oh, yes, Mr. Milne. We had a very good flight, sir. I'm glad. Dolores has been telling us about your friends. Good morning. Good morning. Very nice of you to let us impose like this, Mr. Milne. I have a very special reason for being grateful to the Navy lieutenant. During the war, most of my family was in Shanghai. Oh, but that's selfish. I should say the whole world is grateful. Oh, uh, wouldn't you like to say goodbye to Dolores? She and Mr. Gregory are in the patio. Uh, read it back, Miss Greaves. That last paragraph. We regret to advise you that the last shipment of chocolate was in every way inferior. If this happens again, it will result in immediate cancellation of all our orders. Type it up. Address the envelope to Havana headquarters and a copy to Singapore. Oh, Mr. Milne's coming. What? Oh. Lieutenant and Mrs. Hobson, this is my business associate, Mr. Gregory. How do you do? Good morning, sir. That's a wonderful plane you people have. We certainly appreciate the ride. I'm delighted. So you and Mr. Slattery are old friends? We met in the Navy, Mr. Gregory. Well, we won't be needing the plane today, Mr. Slattery, so if you wish to be with your friends... Well, thank you very much, sir. See you later, Dolores. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Your friends are all right, Dolores. Only the next time you bring guests, first you ask me, and I will say no. Gregory, tell it to Slattery. There's no point in upsetting Dolores. You know she isn't any too well. I'm all right, Mr. Milne. I've been meaning to ask you. No more headaches, my dear. No more dizzy spells. I'm all right. There's nothing wrong with me. And in that case, you won't mind typing those letters? Right away, Mr. Gregory. That girl. Slattery. Those people. I tell you, we've got to be more careful. Why do you let yourself get so excited, Gregory? Even with my heart. See how calm I am. That girl. If you ask me, I'd throw her out. She's a rope around our necks. Yes. Yes, she is, Gregory. And that's exactly why we can't throw her out. In a few moments, we'll bring you Act Two of Slattery's Hurricane. Now, here's our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins. Greetings, Libby. I have a nomination to make, Mr. Keeley. How about making Clark Gable our permanent mayor? Oh, you're talking about the Metro-Golden-Mayor comedy, Key to the City. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I'll go along with you on that, Libby, but let's make Loretta Young honorary mayor at the same time. Well, why not? She's delightful as a lady mayor in the picture. Very dignified and hardworking, Till Clark comes along. And then romance begins. And some hilarious comedy. <laughs> With Frank Morgan as the fire chief and Marilyn Maxwell as a very beautiful but not very bright bubble dancer. I love the scene where Loretta goes to the costume ball as a little girl in pigtails. And Clark complicates things with his surprise masquerade costume. So much so that they both land in jail. But no matter, the lady mayor wins her man. That we take for granted, Libby, with Loretta Young as the heroine of Key to the City. Yes, John. She's so thoroughly feminine. Always has the fresh, beautifully groomed look that's so appealing. You know, she's a luxe girl, all right. Indeed she is. Loretta has used Lux soap for years for complexion care. And now that Lux toilet soap comes in the big bath size, she's more devoted to it than ever. It's a really luxurious bath soap, isn't it? It certainly is. With that rich, creamy lather and a perfume screen stars love. The Luxo perfume is exclusive. It's a blend of many flower fragrances. And a Luxo beauty bath makes you sure of all over Lux loveliness. That's important these days when the new strapless dresses are really high style. And arms and shoulders must be at their prettiest. You can't buy a finer soap than the generous new bath size Lux toilet soap. Your store is featuring Lux Toilet Soap now. Be sure to put both the bath and the complexion size on your shopping list. Let the whole family enjoy this big, longer-lasting bath cake. Remember, nine out of ten screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap. Here's our producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act two of Slattery's Hurricane, starring Maureen O'Hara as Aggie, Richard Conti as Slattery, and Veronica Lake as Dolores. Off the coast of Florida, a raging hurricane mounts in fury. And headed straight for it, buffeted by the lashing winds, is a small airplane. At the controls is Will Slattery. 
you read me, Navy Tower? Did you get my message? Do you read me? Over. We read you, Slattery. Are you coming in or not? You want the exact location of the center of the hurricane, don't you? What is it you guys call it? The eye? Okay, I'll go look for the eye. Over. I'm telling you once again, if you want to kill yourself, find some other... Sorry, Commander Kramer, but you're repeating yourself, sir. Kill myself, huh? <laughs> kill myself. It's an idea, isn't it? And what would you do, Commander Kramer, sir? Only you'd never get yourself in a spot like this to begin with, would you? But then you don't know Aggie. And you'd never pull the stunts that I'd pull, would you? Like the time I invited her to dinner. That intimate little roadhouse. Just you and I, Aggie. You're reforming, Aggie. I can remember when you were never on time for a date. Hello, Will. Well, this is a nice place. I was hoping you'd like it. How'd we get off all right? Oh, sure. These three-day patrols are just routine. Well, where's Dolores? Oh, oh yes. Well, at the last minute, she got a headache. You mean she's not coming at all? You didn't really expect to find her here, did you? Of course I did. Well, maybe I didn't. Maybe I was just kidding myself. In any event, I'm leaving. Come on, be yourself. What's the harm in having dinner together? You've got to eat someplace. What's the matter with you? You're acting like a schoolgirl. Look, Will. I don't intend to get myself in any spot where I have to trust you or myself. Okay. I'm going home. All right, I'll drive you home. I'll get a cab. Why? We're not a couple of kids. You want to go home, so I'll take you. Too bad they serve the best food in the town. Sorry if I spoiled your evening, Will. Forget it. Maybe I am being a little silly, but with Hobby out of town... It was my fault. I tried to pull a fast one, and I didn't get by with it. I'll try again some other time. I wouldn't put it past you. Thanks for the warning. Is that the house? That's it. It's starting to rain. You know, it was raining that last night in San Diego, too. <clears throat> you were wearing those crazy shoes. I had to carry you across the gutter, and me and my wife. You've got quite a memory. I thought about that night a lot of times. That blue dress you wore. <clears throat> sequins and a little black bow right, right about there. You looked awfully pretty that night, Aggie. There's not much you forget, is there? There's nothing about you I can't forget. Well, aren't you going to scream, slap my face, or doesn't it mean anything now when I kiss you? Well, please. Please, I... Good night. Now, wait a minute. There's one thing you've got to get clear in your head. What I told you the other night, I meant every word, Aggie. I've got you in my system, and I can't get you out, ever. Oh, well. Hello, Will. Well, what are you doing here? The boss keep you late tonight? No. Your door wasn't locked tonight. I thought I'd wait for you. I was worried. About me? I always worry about you. Uh, did you meet your friend for dinner? Who did you say it was? What are you getting at, Dolores? You wouldn't lie to me, would you, Will? It wasn't Aggie. You know you're starting to talk like a wife? Funny you should mention that word. After all, she is Harvey's wife. Look, do me a favor. Will you drop it? All right, we'll drop it. But there is something else I wanted to talk to you about. I want you to quit this job. Quit? The best job a pilot ever had? You got it for me, didn't you? What's the matter with you, anyway? You know it's a bad job. It's doing sa the same thing to you that it's already done to me. Oh, Will, I'm so scared. I think I'm going to lose my mind. Look, this job isn't doing anything to me that I don't want it to do. As far as I'm concerned, Milne and Gregory are in the candy business. That's all I know. That's all I want to know. I don't want to hear your ideas on it or anybody else's. Is that clear? You have such a nice way of expressing yourself. Yes, it's very clear. I won't bother you with it anymore. Good. I won't bother you with anything anymore. I'm quitting tomorrow. Yeah, I know. You were going to quit last week and the week before and the week before that. Why don't you relax? So I had dinner with another girl. So what? And you were with her. Yes, I was with her. You want to know something else? You were right. I knew her a long time before Hobson ever set eyes on her. And would you mind getting out of here? I'd like to get some sleep. I seem to remember you telling me Harvey was your friend. He is. And the fact that he's married to Aggie doesn't mean anything to you? It means that he can take care of himself. And while you're asking questions, I'll tell you something else. Aggie's the only girl that ever meant two cents to me. She always has and she always will. And if Hobson is married to her, that's just too bad. 
I used to think you were a man, Will. I don't care now what you do to yourself, and I don't care what you've done to me. I asked for it. But what you're doing to Aggie and Hobby is rotten, and I hate you for it. You through? Yes, I'm through. Then hate me outside, will you? I'm tired. Oh, brother, what a tough guy you were. You're getting just what you asked for, and you kept right on asking for it, didn't you? Didn't you? Come in, Mr. Saturday. Come in. Uh, you and Dolores are rather good friends, aren't you? Well, yes, Mr. Milne, I guess we are. And then I know you must be worried about her, too. Worried, sir? Because she isn't here. She's gone. Oh, come in, Gregory. No word? Nothing. Well, maybe she's gone into town. Has anything happened between you two? Oh, no, nothing important. It's very important to us that we will find Miss Cleves. As you know, Mr. Slattery, she handles all my personal matters and the private files. It's not like her to go off without any word. If you should hear from her... Of course, Mr. Mill, I'll let you know at once. Thank you. You see, having no relatives, no place to go, I just can't imagine. Well, let me see what I can do, Mr. Mill. Thank you, my boy. You gave it a big try, didn't you? One phone call to the manager of her apartment house. She's gone. Any forwarding address? None? Thanks. One fast phone call. But you really didn't think she'd walk out on you, did you? Not on Will Slattery. Anyway, maybe it was a good idea if the laws did get herself lost for a while. There'd be nobody now to check up on you. Nobody to tell you the kind of a heel you were. Nobody to say, after all, she is Hobby's wife. <laughs> you ran true to form, didn't you, Willie boy? Why didn't you just stick a knife into Hobby's back? Would have been quick. Good morning, Mr. Slattery. I'm sorry to disturb you this early. Well, that's all right, Mr. Milne. Any word from Dolores? No, no, nothing. I, uh, I need the plane this morning in about an hour. I'll be ready, sir. Uh, you may have to consult your maps. It's a very small island, Corito Santos. No, not far from Cuba. I have a dear friend who is a planter there. If it's on the map, we'll find it, Mr. Milne. Excuse me, sir, but do you think you should go? You don't look so well. I'm not well, Mr. Slattery. Perhaps this little trip will make me feel better. Uh, we'll be going alone, just you and I. Mr. Gregory is in town today. Yes, sir. <laughs> This is NC-2975 calling Miami Radio. NC-2975 calling Miami Radio. Over. NC-2975, this is Miami Radio. Go ahead. Miami Radio, this is NC-2975. I'm 90 miles southeast Miami, coming in 1,000 feet. Will Slattery, pilot. R.J. Milne, M-I-L-N-E, owner of plane, died a few minutes ago during flight. Heart attack. Please make arrangements for ambulance at R.J. Milne Estate. Notify coroner's office. Confirm, please. This is Miami Radio. Roger will call. Out. Hello? Will, this is Dolores. Dolores, where are you? Never mind that. I just read in the newspaper about Mr. Milne. Will, did... Did you find anything? Like what, for instance? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. An envelope full of something. He had it under his shirt. Just before he died, he begged me to throw it out. But you didn't. Didn't I? Now, where are you? Are you all right? Please, well, you've got to get out of there. You don't know what they'll do to you, Gregory. I know all about it. I know what I'm doing. I just want to know where you are. Sorry, Will. I should have known better than to try to talk to well, you. Well, now, baby, don't say that. Just listen to me for a minute, will you? Hello? Hello? Operator. Operated the puzzle, the trace called for me. I was just speaking to him. Milne always carried it taped to his chest. Business papers. I want it. I haven't seen any papers. You're a very smart boy, Slattery. Don't start being a fool now. You've been working for us. We've been paying you. No questions asked, no trouble. Very comfortable. Let's keep it that way. Yeah. 
This used to be an easy job before I knew anything about it. But now I know that makes it tough. So? So I want more dough. 500 bucks a week, and I want you to talk real nice and friendly to me, like Mr. Milne did. And I want you to call me Mr. Slattery. I like that. Then you'll give me the envelope? You have no use for it now. Sure, I'll give it to you. But then what happens? You knock me off, huh? Don't try it, Mr. Gregory. You knock me off, and you're dead, too. I've got a letter in a safety deposit box in the bank. It's addressed to the cops. It tells them all about you. So if you want to keep healthy, I've got to keep healthy, too. Well, yeah, then there's nothing to worry about, is there? Mm. We have a deal, Mr. Slattery. You make a lot of money. You'll be very happy. Oh, I almost forgot. This letter came for you today. Forgive me for opening it. And my congratulations. Navy Department? Yeah, it looks very official. Your hero. They're going to give you a medal. Navy Cross. Yes, try to keep sober for the ceremonies, Mr. Slattery. We'll talk some more business after you get your medal. That was the end of the free ride. Gregory punched your ticket and he punched it good. You were in it up to your ears now. And on top of that, you had the guts to accept the Navy cross. <laughs> the Navy thought a lot of you that day, didn't they, Slattery? Full dress parade, people in the grandstand, even an admiral making a speech. Slattery, Lieutenant, United States Naval Reserve, for extraordinary heroism in an air-sea engagement off the Marianas Islands on August 6, 1944, for single-handedly sinking the Japanese light cruiser, Zagaho, thereby contributing materially to the success of his squadron. His skilled airmanship, courage, and devotion to duty upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President of the United States, John L. Sullivan, Secretary of the Navy. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. Will, Will, what's your hurry? Maggie. You don't think I'd miss this, do you? Do you mind if I kiss you in public? What was that for? For a lot of things. I'm proud of you, Will. Harvey, you still at Pensacola? Yes, he'll be back tonight. Come on, let's get out of here. Maggie, there was nothing to worry about. No, of course not. Just walk in, tell a guy you're going to take his wife away from him. Sorry, Harvey, but Aggie and I decided we don't need you anymore. Aggie and I. You decided the slattery. The big hero with the Navy Cross. Somebody else reviewed your case that day, too, didn't he? And he did a good job. A doctor at the General Hospital. Hello? Mr. Slattery? Yes? This is Dr. Ross of the General Hospital. General Hospital? That's right, Mrs. Slattery. You're acquainted with a girl named Dolores Greaves. What about her? Well, she's a patient here. Mr. Slattery, I'd like to see you as soon as possible. Can you come here? Yes, sure. I, I leave right away. I attended the ceremonies this morning at Master Field, Mr. Slattery. You were given a medal, I believe. How is Dolores, Dr. Ross? Miss Greaves was found at the field, unconscious. I made the diagnosis. It was reasonably easy. She's in one of our psychiatric wards. I, I just can't believe it. No, nobody ever does. I had quite a talk with Miss Greaves. You're aware she was very much in love with you? That as a matter of fact, it was more than love? She depended on you? I don't know whether she did or not. Anyway, what's that got to do with it? The fact that she might not be here if you did. Now, look, doctor, I had nothing to do with it. I didn't say you did. I only said that it appears that Miss Greaves was very much in love with you. But apparently she felt she was someone she could depend on. Now, wait a minute, Doctor. I suppose you wait a minute. I know I'm exceeding my authority in talking to you like this, but if you treated her like a human being, using a little sympathy, a little understanding, things might have been quite different for her. Now, 
If you care to tell me your side of the story... There is no other side. May I see her, please? Please go, Will. Please. I don't want you to see me like this. Don't turn away, honey. It's all right. Why didn't you tell me? I tried to, but you wouldn't listen. I didn't know. You didn't want to know. You didn't want to know about anything, not about me or Mill or Gregory, not even about yourself. I'm not blaming you. It's my own fault. You didn't ask me to follow you around like a baby. You even warned me it was just all for laughs. I made a mistake and fell in love. I want to help, honey. I'd do anything. You can't help me, Will. Nobody can. Don't talk like that. You've got to get well. Dr. Ross told me you were at the field. <laughs> that must have handed you a laugh, watching me get a medal. But don't kid yourself that I think medals mean anything. It's what people do that counts, and I... I didn't do so good, did I? Look, baby, this medal. I don't deserve it. Keep it for me, will you? We'll make a deal. You get well, and I'll try to make up for the things I did. Then I'll come back for it, Okay. Just leave me alone. I'll leave it here anyway. I'll be back tomorrow, honey, in case you want to see me. Oh, Will. Will. Hello, Aggie. Will. Oh, Will, I'm so glad you're here. Hobby's back. Back? Yes, and he saw us in the car this morning... He started asking questions. What did you tell him? I told him we'd known each other before. I, I had to. Well, what did he say? That's just it. He won't say anything. He's been drinking, and now he won't even listen to me. He'll listen to me. Well, we've made a terrible mistake. You know that now as well as I do. Well, before it's too Behold late, we... Oh, the bridegroom cometh. Hiya, lover boy. Hobby, I want to talk to you. You don't want to talk to me. You want to talk to Aggie. <laughs> Go on, talk to her. Oh, my me, you never did. All right, but you're going to listen to me. You've got the wrong angle on this, Hobby. This has all been my doing, not Aggie's. Sure, we knew each other before, but that was a long time ago. <clears throat> I'm the one that started it up again. I'm the one who tried to take her away from you. Nice going. Yeah, but it didn't work out. You want to know why? I'll give you a very good reason. Aggie's not in love with me. She's in love with you. Don't make me laugh. You expect me to believe that from a guy like you? You don't have to believe anything. Just look at her. I don't want to look at her. You're the one I want to look at. <laughs> Come on, fight. Fight, what's the matter with you? Fight! Hello? This is Commander Kramer, Mrs. Hobson. Has Lieutenant Hobson returned yet? Commander Kramer? Oh, oh, no. No, sir, he's not here. Give me the phone. Uh, Hobby, no, no. Hello, Commander. This is Hobson, sir. I just got in. That storm has intensified itself into a major hurricane, Hobby. It's an emergency or I wouldn't call you. I'll be there, sir. The relief crews have evacuated all the other planes to Cherry Point. Yours is the only one left. How soon can you get here? I... I'll say 30 minutes, sir. Better make it 40 in this rain. Good. I'll have your crew standing by. Yes, sir. Hobby, you can't go. No. They'll court-martial you if you show up like this. And if you try to fly, you'll kill yourself. Darling, please, you've got to believe me. Get away from me. Will, you've got to stop him. Yeah. <clears throat> That'll hold him for a while. The rest is up to you, Aggie. I've got to get out of here. Hobby. Still trying to contact Slattery, Commander. We can't get a signal. Yeah, there's no use trying. He refuses to answer. Besides, if he's still alive, he's beyond transmission range by now. Why would he do a thing like this, Hobson? Why? Uh... Help me out, sir. Help you out? I was in no shape for duty, sir, when you called me tonight. I'd been drinking. Slattery, well, he... But you got here as you said you would? Yes, sir, I got here. Too late. You got any chance, Commander? A light plane and a hurricane? You know the answer as well as I do. All right, Hardy, keep trying to contact him. Yes, sir. Alert your crew, Hobson. We'll give Slattery ten minutes. After that, be ready to take off. Yes, sir. <laughs> Pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a few moments, 
moments, we'll return with the third act of Slattery's Hurricane. Our guest this evening is blonde, blue-eyed Marion Marshall, who used to be a cover girl before she came to the attention of 20th Century Fox. It's more exciting to be a starlet, isn't it, Marion? Definitely, Mr. Keeley. I've enjoyed every part I've played. And for inspiration, there's always a set of a new picture to visit. Take comedy technique, for instance. I had a wonderful time seeing them do Mother Didn't Tell Me. What a gifted comedian Dorothy McGuire turns out to be. She's perfect as the young wife who discovers that being married to a doctor makes home life a little uncertain. William Lundigan is the absent-minded physician who unintentionally neglects his wife. Yes, and I love June Havoc as the other doctor's wife. She has a dry wit that delights you. I understand June's been so busy with stage engagements, she hasn't had much time for pictures. It's a pleasure to see her in Mother Didn't Tell Me. A really accomplished actress, and uh, also very easy on the eyes. She certainly is, Mr. Kennedy. A real blonde beauty with fair, delicate skin. And I happen to know she's a Lux girl, has used Lux for years. June is like so many famous stars who wouldn't trust their complexions to any other soap. That's because Lux Toilet Soap gives delicate skin the gentle, protecting care it needs. Indeed it does. I find those Lux Soap facials really work, Mr. Kennedy. They leave skin so fresh, really make it softer and smoother. Recent tests by skin specialists prove how effective those facials are. In actually three out of four cases, complexions improved in a short time. Thank you, Miss Marion Marshall, for being here tonight. Now, here's a shopping hint for women everywhere. Your store is featuring Lux Toilet Soap now. Be sure to put both the complexion and the big bath size on your shopping list. See what quick new loveliness this fragrant white soap will give your skin. Remember, nine out of ten screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap. Now, Mr. William Keeley, our producer. The curtain rises on Act Three of Slattery's Hurricane, starring Richard Conti as Slattery, Marina O'Hara as Aggie, and Veronica Lake as Dolores. It's a long gamble Will Slattery is taking, flying out alone to meet the hurricane, to report its position and progress. To Slattery, the hurricane holds the answer to all his problems, a chance to square himself, but a million to one chance of coming back alive. And now the black violence of the hurricane gathers itself for the thrust shoreward. And the light plane is little more than a leaf in the wind. But suddenly, Slattery sees a break in the storm. A patch of light and a quiet sea beneath. A great pocket surrounded on every side by the roaring elements. This is it, the center, the heart. The eye of the hurricane. Well, what do you know, Slattery? You made it. Now you've got something to tell them back there. Master power from Slattery... Master Tower from Slattery, do you read me? Over. Master Tower from Slattery, do you read me? Tower from Slattery, have position. Do you read me? Come in, please. Come in. Operations from Commander Kramer. Operations This is from operations. Commander... Go ahead, sir. There has been no further contact with Grumman Mallard 2975. Pilot Slattery. Order direction finder networks to traits transmission, please. Grumman Mallard 2975. Advise Coast Guard and all ships in area. That is all. Yes, sir. I will repeat the order. No further contact Kramer, with Grumman Slattery, Mallard 2975. Pilot Slattery. Uh, hold Order message direction. operations. Stand by. Pass the tower from Slattery. Tower from Slattery, do you read me? One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. Half position. Over. Slattery, this is Kramer. I read you. Over. I'm in the eye of the storm. I think I can give you everything you want. Have position by dual ADF. Are you ready? The storm center at 25.8 north. 76.9 west. Over. Slattery, repeat position. Repeat position. Over. Latitude, 25.8 north. Longitude, 76.9 west. 
Over. Roger, hold on. I'll check the charts. He's right. That puts the center of the hurricane 240 miles north or east to where it was last night. Yes. Slattery, can you see the ocean? Can you see the surface? Sure, I can see it. Can you see anything else? Just a lot of sky and a lot of water. I'm in the middle of a merry-go-round. What else can I give you? Stand by, Slattery. Stand by. Well, he's got the wrong dope. Razorback Island's only a mile away from his position. If he's where he says he is, he couldn't miss it. Slattery, your position does not check. Your instruments must be wrong. Your position does not check. I've double-checked my instruments. That must be the correct reading. Over. Yeah, he must be lost. Slattery, I cannot confirm your position. Return to base. Do you read me? Return to base. Wait a minute. Hold everything. Slattery, what is it? I almost hit something. Looks like an island. Shaped like a big sleeping hog. Razorback, he's got it. Slattery, your position verified. Do you hear me? Position verified. Yeah, thanks. Return to base. For what? Court martial? 20 years? Is that what you said? We'll talk about that later. Are you all right, Slattery? If the plane holds together, I'll be in. Slattery, give Tower 10 minute reports on wind velocity and direction. Roger. Hello. Hello, give me operations. Operations. This is Commander Kramer, teletype, urgent. To combine forecast center from Navy Hurricane Weather Central. Hurricane definitely will strike the coastal area. Order evacuations and boarding up procedures. Start immediately. Present position, Hurricane I follows. Latitude 25. I'm Lieutenant Hopkins' wife. Has he taken off yet? I don't think so, ma'am. Then he must be up in the tower. Is it all right I'm if sorry, I... Mrs. Hobson. You can't go up. Emergency condition. If you care to wait here, I'll see if I can contact Lieutenant Hobson for you. Thank you. Navy Tower from Grumman Mallet. Navy Tower from Grumman Mallet. Mayday. Mayday. Do you read? Over. Mayday. How do you think they're going to help you? Run up a ladder? The starboard engine's dying, wise guy. You're cooked. That engine isn't going to catch. Just fly her down. You're the guy that wanted it this way. Just fly her down. Hello, Aggie. You shouldn't have come here. Hobby, I was so frightened. About Slattery? Don't worry. He made the eye of the storm. He's on his way back. No, Hobby, it wasn't Will. I was afraid you might be flying. I know how you feel. You have every right in the world. I, I don't know what to say except that... But I love you, Hobby. I always have. And I always will. I... I have to stay here for a while, yeah. Can I... Can I wait for you? Wait for me. I just can't think, Aggie. Guy, you're going. Come in, Slattery. Come in. Could not read last message. Are you all right? Repeat, please. Could not read you. Over. Tower from Slattery. Tower from Slattery. Do you read me? Mayday. Lost one engine. Is Lieutenant Hobson available? Lieutenant Hobson, please. Over. Stand by, Slattery. Lieutenant Hobson, please. Slattery's got guts, all right. Notify air sea rescue. No private plane is built for weather duty. All he can do now is... Oh, Slattery wants to talk to you, Harvey. Yes, sir. Come in, Slattery. This is Hobson. Come in. Tower from Slattery. Mayday. Won't be able to make it. Take this message, Harvey. Have information on narcotic smuggling ring. Information on narcotic smuggling ring. Information on their activities is in my safety deposit box. In bank. Corner of Collins and 15th. In bank. Corner of Collins and 15th. Do you read me? Do you read me? I read you, Slattery. Over. You heard him, sir. Well, I don't know whether he's crazy or not, but pass it on to the Miami police right away. Yes, sir. This is Kramer, Slattery. Do you read? Give me your position. Come in, Slattery. Come in. Then you don't know... We don't know anything. Aggie, you... 
You better go downstairs again. I'll ask Commander Kramer. Lieutenant Anderson calling Commander Kramer. Commander Kramer, please. Over. Go ahead, Anderson. Ground control approach unit reports aircraft, sir. Has no radio. Approximately three miles from Masters Field. Holy Pete, he made it. He's coming in, Hobby. I don't know how he'll ever bring it down in this. If anybody can, he can. Plane approaching, sir. Plane circling the field. All right, emergency crew on station. Emergency crew on station. The rest of you men outside. We're taking you to the hospital, Slattery. The ambulance is outside. I'm all right, Commander. I walked off the field, didn't I? Well, I, I'd feel a lot better when a doctor tells me you're all right. Did you get my message? Yes, your position was right. We lost contact with you right afterwards. No, no, not that message. I sent a message about a statement... That's that... been taken care of, too. Incidentally, Slattery, uh, there'll be no charges filed against you. Thank you. Hobby, Hobby, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything. Take it easy, Will. By the way, if you haven't any objections, we'll go to the hospital with you, Aggie and I. Okay, Commander? Okay, Lieutenant. I'll help him out of here. Too. Yes, sir. Uh, turn up the radio, Mr. Hardy. I'd like to hear what the weatherman has to say. Yes, sir. Coastal area within the next two hours. The storm has risen to hurricane intensity. Thanks, however, to the advance warning provided by the efforts of the Air Force, the Navy, and the Weather Bureau... Residents of the coastal areas have ample time in which to evacuate to higher ground. The authorities urgently warn against... That's enough, Hardy. Turn it up. Yes, according sir. to recent... Well, we've forgotten something. Sir? This hurricane boiled up so fast we never gave it a code name. <laughs> what was it on the last one? Messy Tessie, sir. Yeah. The one before that? Whirling Joe. <laughs> well, there's nothing funny about this one. Uh, let's just name this one Slattery's Hurricane. Military Air Transport Service, Flight 27, for San Francisco, Pearl Harbor, and Guam. Will the following please report to dispatcher, Lieutenant Davis, Bennett, Slattery, and Flynn. Lieutenant Davis, Bennett, Slattery, and Flynn. Oh, Slattery! Well, hello, Commander. It's all right. I've cleared you with a dispatcher. I, uh... Just came down to wish you luck. Thank you very much, sir. I uh, also want to tell you that I'm glad that you're back in the regular service again. It's good to be back, sir. Ah, you're a lucky guy, Slattery. That crack-up of yours would have killed anybody else. What's that head of yours made out of, anyway? <laughs> bones. Solid bones, sir. You can't hurt that. <laughs> well, there's somebody else who'd like to wish you luck. He's all yours, Miss Green. Dolores, you look wonderful. I'm all well now. And I'm going to stay that way don't have to worry about me anymore. You look pretty wonderful yourself, Will. That's <laughs> the uniform. I brought this, Will. Your Navy Cross. I don't need it anymore. I thought you were coming back for it. Keep it for me, will you? Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? M-A-T-S Flight 27, now ready for departure. Will Lieutenant... You always said I kissed like a little girl. I did? I said that? Solid bone, all right. Not a brain in my head. The curtain falls on Slattery's Hurricane, and here are our stars who certainly deserve your applause. Maureen O'Hara... Bridget Conte, and Veronica Lake. <laughs> Maureen, have you ever been in a hurricane? No, thank you. Ordinary March weather is enough for me. What's the old saying, if March comes in like a lion? 
does something like going well, out like a lion. Well, it came in like a lion in the Lux Radio Theater. In Oklahoma, it came in like a leopard, a very spotty month. <laughs> <laughs> Maureen, every time you visit us, I'm reminded how gorgeous your Lux complexion looks in Technicolor. Thank you, Bill. I've always been a Lux girl. Veronica, there's something I've always wanted to ask you. What became of that hairdo you used to have? You know, where you wore it over one eye? <laughs> well, I tell you, I just combed it back. I wanted to see how the other half lives. <laughs> well, it's very becoming, Veronica, and we enjoy looking at the other half of a lovely Lux complexion. You know, Lux has always been my favorite complexion care. Can you tell us what play you have for next week, Bill? One of the best love stories ever written, Maureen, because next week's drama is Little Women. Our play is adapted from Metro Golden Mare's superb motion picture. And we'll have three of the original stars of the picture June Allison, Peter Lawford, and Janet Lee. Three great stars in a story enjoyed by generations of Americans. Perfect entertainment for the whole family. So don't miss June Allison as Joe, Peter Lawford as Laurie, and Janet Lee as Meg in Little Women. We'll be looking forward to it, Bill. Good night. Good night, Good night. and many thanks to you all. Here's a passion flash from Hollywood. An all-occasion glove with a novel drawstring adjusts to three different lengths. Short for suit, bracelet length for afternoon, and full length for evening. Maureen O'Hara has ordered several pairs in pastel fabrics to complement her spring and summer wardrobe. Of course, her gloves, like her washable dresses and blouses, get gentle Lux Lake care. She knows how easily wrong washing methods fade delicate colors. Actual washing tests prove mild, safe Lux Lake care keeps colors excitingly lovely up to three times as long. Be sure to get Lux Lake tomorrow. Give all your nice washables that lovely luck look. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents June Allison, Peter Lawford, and Janet Lee in Little Women. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. O'Hara appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of Under My Skin, starring John Garfield. Richard Conti also appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, whose next release will be the Technicolor production Wabash Avenue, starring Betty Grable and Victor Mature. Heard in our cast tonight were Stephen Dunn as Hobson, Bill Conrad as Kramer, Alan Reed as Milne, and Frederick Tozer, Larry Dobkin, Bill Johnstone, George Neese, William Green, Eddie Marr, and Bob Griffin. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Little Women, starring June Allison, Peter Lawford, and Janet Lee. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.